Hello ladies, gentlemen, and internet trolls, and welcome to Fan Fridays, the show where I give outsiders an inside look into the mind of an MLB all-star. If you've ever wondered how my drone hit the scoreboard in Chicago a couple years ago, stay tuned. I answer that question and many more right after the break. <laughs> Question number one. Donna Kinder asks, if you couldn't pitch, what would you be doing for a living? Well, I don't know exactly what I would be doing. Probably running business, working with robotics. Uh, I really enjoy building things and figuring out how things work. Um, really interested in business as well. I run two companies right now, uh, Momentum, my media company, and Brandish Sports, my marketing company. I have some properties that I'm invested in, um, but mostly I think I'm just a guy that likes to figure it out, and I'd be doing something in the intellectual space, um, challenging my mind and, and trying to grow in that area. Question number two. Matt Keatron says his 14-year-old son Andrew is a big fan, bought the Oats warm-up javelin, works with driveline, etc. He is curious what model glove I use while pitching. Well, I don't actually know that. Um, I have it here. It's a Nike Shido. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Um, yeah, this is it. It's pretty uh, pretty beat up. Got used a lot in uh, in the season. But um, yeah, I got my name on it here. Uh, Trevor Bauer right there. Um, pretty simple design actually. Uh, a little bit of a V web, or I guess a two part web, but a little V pattern here, which is kind of cool. Um, as you can see here, it kind of got a little bit ripped up playing catch. But um, yeah, this is it. I don't know if Nike actually sells them uh, in store or not, but uh, I like it. It does everything I need. Um, it's pretty light, breaks in pretty easily, and yeah, that's what I use. So I actually have a, a couple of custom designs coming up this year. Um, some red for, for Cincinnati and um, stuff I'm pretty excited about. So yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Question number three. Brad Hubler says, pitching in both the American League and now back currently pitching in the NL, do you prepare any differently? Mostly due to the fact pitchers hit in the NL, how does this impact you to prepare to bat during starts? Do you take many BP cuts? Um, it actually impacts me in a lot of ways. I take a decent amount of BP cuts, uh, probably hit twice in between starts. Um, in starts, it's kind of hard to navigate when you do have to hit because you come off the mound, your heart rate's way up, you're used to having a kind of in-between innings routine, and then you don't get to do it. You got to go stand on deck. Sometimes you're on base for a long time. I don't get on base a whole lot, so that's not a problem I have to face too often. But uh, in the rare chance I do get on base, then your heart rate stays up, and then maybe you're stranded on base, and you come in, um, and you got to go out and pitch right away. So monitoring energy levels, especially when it gets really hot uh, in the middle of the summer, um, it can be kind of difficult. Uh, so it definitely impacts the game a lot. Also because of the pinch hitting aspect, um, you know, sometimes you're pitching pretty well, but your team might be behind a run or two and got a pinch hit to, to try to get some runs on the board. And so your start might get cut short or shorter than it would have been in the, in the American League. Um, so there's a lot of different things that go on a lot of different ways that changes uh, the atmosphere of the game and and the experience of the game for the pitcher and a lot of a lot more things you have to kind of deal with and get used to but like anything you practice it and you know, it it kind of fades into the background and in, in the middle of the competition question number four daniel wood asks how likely that you will re-sign with the reds after this contract bracket three reds heart reds well Daniel, uh, I would love to sign with the Reds. I think they've been really good to me. They've treated me really well. I like all the people in the clubhouse, the coaching staff. Um, I've had a really good time there so far. Obviously, it's a business at the end of the day. So in order for me to re-sign, they would want to have me. I would want to have you know, more time there um, in Cincinnati. The fans have been great. I've had nothing but positive experiences so far. So hopefully we have another good year, um, make the playoffs here, win it all in 2020. That's the goal. Um, and then, yeah, we'll see how, see where it goes. But uh, there's no reason I wouldn't sign with the Reds currently. Question number five. Edward Bean says, I know this is a stupid question, but when I dream about being a professional, I know it is all about winning and being the best. However, as I get older, I tend to think, is it okay to miss the playoffs? It means a longer vacation. 
Do you think players feel this as a good consolation to missing the playoffs? Um, it changes depending on how in the race or out of the race you were and when you get eliminated and stuff like that. I know kind of coming up in the minor leagues, um, a lot of players would look and say, oh, I don't want to make the playoffs because then we have to play an extra two or three weeks. We're not really getting paid anything anyway. Um, and so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I don't really think that's a, uh, a mindset in the big leagues. I've, at least I've never been around it. I think people all want to make the playoffs. They all want to you know, be in the race. And everyone goes to spring training every year trying to win a World Series and believing that they can win a World Series. And um, to not get the chance to at least compete for that really sucks. Uh, I think the closer you get to making it, let's say you're in a divisional race and to the last weekend or uh, last week of the season and you end up not making it, that, those are the ones that really sting. Um, because you were you were fighting to get there, and then all of a sudden it just ends and it's over. Um, it's the same thing that makes getting knocked out of the playoffs so tough. You're you're there. You're you're you think you're about ready to accomplish your goal. You've you've played this long six month season and a month and a half of spring training, and all of a sudden it's over. Um, so it's tough to deal with. I, Players do love their vacation, obviously. I don't know if it's a good consolation prize or not. Um, I don't think that's really the mindset that goes into it, but uh, I don't think that was a dumb question at all because there's, uh, as with anything human, there's a lot of different ways to look at it and a lot of different mindsets that go into it. So thank you for that question. Question number six. Jane Beach says, the saddest day for me was 7 31 I'm an obsessive longtime fan and married to a retired NASA engineer. My question is about your diet. Are you plant-based or pescatarian or just a balanced diet? Well, there's a lot to unpack there. Uh, first off, a retired NASA engineer is pretty impressive. I'm a little bit jealous. Uh, growing up, I always wanted to fly spaceships and go to the moon and do all that stuff. So um, a NASA engineer is, you know, that's impressive. Uh, so good for you. And on my diet, I'm, I'm pretty much just balanced, but uh, I do track everything, and so I know, like, I think over the past, let's say, six months, I, I've literally tracked every single meal. Um, I use an app called MyFitnessPal, and I get as close as I can on the different macros and stuff like that. Uh, so I have fitness goals that I set. I have nutrition goals that I set, um, you know, number of carbs, number of protein grams, and all this different stuff on a daily basis. So as long as I'm getting close to those and I can kind of monitor how that correlates with my body composition and how I feel and my training loads and I track all this data. So um, kind of just a balanced diet, but that's kind of how I try to approach it is to have enough data in different areas that I know how things interact with each other. Um, I don't really like to say that I'm one thing or another thing. I just like to try to be the best combination of all the things, if that makes sense. Question number seven. Fred Merkel asks how my drone hit the brand new video scoreboard at Chicago a couple of years ago. Well, I got a lot to say on this one because it didn't actually happen. Uh, I know that's what got reported in the media. And the reason it got reported is because the people who were watching it were kind of watching from home plate area and the drone was flying along and it crossed in front of the scoreboard and then it fell to the ground. So they thought it hit the scoreboard and fell. That's not actually what happened. What happened is what's called a brownout. I'm flying along and my radio signal between my radio and my drone got interrupted, whether it's the Wi-Fi in the stadium or whatever other um, issues that can kind of cause that. And so when that happened, all the motors just froze. And then so the drone naturally just kind of tumbled out of the air, but just the way it happened to be situated and the way that their vantage point was, they thought it hit the scoreboard and fell. So all you Chicago fans that are watching this, don't worry, your video scoreboard is completely fine. I actually have the video from the GoPro that was strapped to the drone. I reviewed it, didn't come anywhere close to the scoreboard, nothing to worry about there. Just another thing the traditional media has gotten wrong about me, but glad we got to clear that up. Thank you for the question. And that's all for this episode of Fan Fridays. As a quick reminder, these videos are only possible if you get involved. The more questions I'm asked, the more I answer. So if you like this video, tap the like button, share it with your friends, and encourage them to drop their questions in the comments. If you'd like a shout out in a future episode, head over to trevorbauer.com, sign up for my email list, and submit your questions on the homepage. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week for another Fan Friday.